Joining me now to discuss what is in store for stocks in the year ahead is Ed Klissel, chief U.S. strategist at Ned Davis Research. Ed, good to see you. Nice to see you, too. Uh, so, you know, we have all these, uh, I guess, patterns we can seize upon. We have a, a market that looks like it's run a long way in a short period of time, you know, since November 1st. On the other hand, we're just making about a two-year round trip. What's your work telling you to expect, you know, out of stocks given this environment? So we looked at periods where we've gone a long time without making a record high. So we're about 500 trading days from that January 22 record. And it's actually uh, only about six times previously that we've gone uh, gone this long without that. Then we, what we did is we looked at cases when there was at least one year in between record highs, 14 cases for the S&P going back to 28. And one year later, actually, the market tended to be up a lot more often than it's not, up 13 or 14 times with an average gain of 13 percent. So it's more of a case, Michael, of the market starting a new up leg and it's a technical breakout rather than the market's tired from having to climb all the way back and, and you know, it's ready to start a new bear market. Right. So it doesn't necessarily uh, tend to treat it as a, as a ceiling being hit. Um, and, of course, we've had, you know, some growth in earnings. The economy's bigger. We're through a Fed tightening cycle since we had the last uh, record high for the S&P 500 almost two years ago. What else is working either in favor of the market or against it with regard to the macro backdrop? I know we were just talking earlier about the don't fight the Fed, don't fight the tape rules seem like they're, ha they're reasonably encouraging. I think the, the biggest is there's been so much consternation about this recession. We've been talking about it for going on three years now, and it looks more and more like the Fed might actually pull this off and achieve a soft landing. Uh, and so th there are, is still quite a bit of pessimism out there, though that's been relieved by the strong rally the last couple of months. But I think there are a lot of econ economists out there looking at some you know, pretty reliable economic data saying there's still risk of a recession. So if the Fed can pull it off, I think there's still room for even more more people to come off the sidelines. But I think even a, a bigger situation is what's going on with interest rates. You know, for the first time in 15, 20 years, the bond market has been a reasonable alternative to the stock market. And the 10-year going from 5% to under 390 in a short period of time is probably going to pull some people off the sidelines. And if the Fed cuts next year, you could see some people who are parking their money in cash then maybe putting some of that money into the stock market as well. And in terms of what the Fed might do, and certainly they've hinted that there'll be cuts even if the economy remains okay and the market maybe is over-extrapolating that into even deeper cuts, what do we know about how the market tends to behave either leading up to that first cut or thereafter? Because a lot of folks will say you don't actually want the Fed to be, be cutting because it has to. Well, it does depend on, on why they're cutting. If they're cutting because they're going into recession, then it does tend to be uh, pretty weak. And, and the market does tend to, on average, do poorly uh, the, the, about, for about five, six months afterwards. But um, if there's a soft landing, you know, like, like we had in 95, like we had in 2018, actually the market tends to do pretty well. And we're actually tracking from the last hike, which probably was in July. Since then, if you look at other soft landing cases, we actually have some catching up to do. And it would support the case for a pretty strong 2024 to catch up just to the average soft landing scenario uh, after that last hike. Interested uh, to hear that you still don't necessarily think s uh, small caps are poised uh, to lead uh, in an enduring way here? Uh, no, actually, we, we do favor small caps o over large oh, you do caps. Right now. Um, okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Now, I would say, Michael, part of the things we've been talking about is the best part of the, for, of the cycle for small caps is actually uh, coming out of a recession as the economy matures. It's really more about large caps. So the economic cycle isn't great, but because small caps have underperformed for so long, you know, they really acted like they were that we were in a recession. There is there's some room for catch up for a while. We've had a nice a nice catch up the last uh, couple of months from small caps. But uh, so I think there, there's a there's maybe some room for small caps to run. But if you're thinking about a a really you know, multi-year run in small caps, yeah, may, maybe it's, it's better coming out of the next recession uh, than you know, in a mid to late cycle economic cycle period. Right. 